Previously, on days one through three of our Arizona Peace Trail trip. We began our 200 mile off-road journey outside of Dayton. After cruising through the remote Palomas Plain, we made first night's camp at the Yuma La Paz County Line. From there, we continued north over I-10 and past old town sites near Salome. Our route then took us northwest through historic Camp Bow and the ghost town of Swan Sea where we stayed the night. Finally, we crossed into Mojave County after traversing through the scenic Planet Mining Area. The trail got rougher and narrower in places as we made our way through miles of dry washes and hills outside of Lake Havasu City. We made camp just north of town in the Mojave Mountains as we hunkered down for the oncoming day of rain. Today, we continue our journey north, passing along old railroad beds and historic sites along the Colorado River. After fighting our way through thick rain, mud, and fog, we make it to Oatman and Bullhead City before crossing and camping in the Black Mountains. We'll wrap up our journey as we head towards the end of our route in Kingman. Just as expected, we awoke to a steady downpour. The relaxing sound of rain on the tent kept us asleep until around 8 o'clock. The ground outside was already saturated, but luckily we were completely dry inside of the tent, which seemed to be holding up to the rain quite well. Eventually, we mustered up the motivation to head outside for the day. We quickly changed and set to work buttoning up camp. I folded up the now soggy tent and put on the travel cover. We picked up and folded up our tarp which we had tried to set up the night before, which of course didn't work. After this, we retreated inside of the Jeep for a fast breakfast. We enjoyed some donuts before starting up the Jeep and retracing our route back to the highway. The trails weren't completely flooded, but they were quite wet already from a few hours worth of rain. The trail out was a bit steep in places, but before we knew it, we were back on Highway 95 again. We initially were going to try and head through the mountains to our next stop, however because of the local flash flood warnings, we opted for the safer way around. This also saved some time, which would be critical later in the day. After a short highway stint, we continued northbound. The road remained wide and smooth before making a turn and dumping us into a wash. We crossed the wash as it follows the Arizona Peace Trail under an active railroad bridge and towards some scenic hills.
Emerging from the wash, the trail begins to head northwest. We followed along a flat raise that was just off to our right. After making it through a small pass, it became clear that this was once an old rail bed. Railroad ties were left in the ground as I got out to check things out. This was the remains of the Atlantic and Pacific Railroad, which only operated on this line from 1883 to 1890. The tracks crossed at Topak nearby, however, flooding caused problems and the line was abandoned and moved just to the south, which is still active today. From here we continued on the trail, crossing up and over the old rail line before emerging on a nice flat section of road. The rain had briefly paused. After a few miles we came to a fairly small hill, which we quickly discovered was completely slick and full of a very thick mud. We trudged along in full-time four-wheel drive as we struggled to keep our momentum moving forward. Watching another vehicle climb through this muddy section shows just a little bit of how slippery it was. The Jeep was now just a bit muddy. A few miles later, we arrived at County Highway 1 and proceeded north. The highway passed through a small town as it followed the Colorado River. The rain resumed and began to clean off a little of the mud that was now everywhere. After passing through Mojave Valley, we were back on dirt and muddy farm roads before making it to our next segment of the trail. This roughly 10 mile route would take us northeast to Oatman where we decided to head for lunch. The trail remained bumpy as we met the local welcoming party just outside of town. After this, the trail remained bumpy. Three miles later, we had arrived at the former site of Milltown, a stop on the old Mojave and Milltown narrow gauge railroad. The railroad was built in 1903 and connected the mines at Oatman to the stamp mill that was constructed here, as well as the nearby Colorado River. The railroad passed through Milltown, which has hardly any ruins left today. The line was abandoned just 10 years later after storms and washouts destroyed a significant part of the rails. We continued northeast as we paralleled the rail bed. At this point, the rain really set in and we weaved our way through a thick fog. The trail got moderate in spots and reduced our pace to a crawl. What little we could see of the surrounding scenery was incredibly green and beautiful. By 1.30 we had covered the 10 miles and reached the end of the trail where the visibility was now nearly down to zero. We followed Route 66 north just a couple of miles to the old mining town of Oatman. Normally, Oatman is buzzing with tourists and burrows stand in the middle of the road. Today was a bit different however. We parked the Jeep and hopped out onto the covered sidewalks, which is where most of the burrows had also retreated to. We grabbed lunch at the famous Oatman Hotel, which opened in 1902. We sat by a fireplace to warm up as we enjoyed a delicious lunch. Mm -hmm. 
After nearly an hour inside, we eventually made it back outside. We returned to the Jeep and continued out of Oatman. Just outside of town, we picked up the Silver Creek Road, which would take us 10 miles to Bullhead City, where we would resupply one last time. The road remained wide and occasionally smooth, although very wet. We passed numerous old mines that dotted what seemed like every hill around us. It was clear just how productive this mining region was, which is still active and producing today. We passed through some more fog, which made the surrounding landscape, which was already pretty incredible, that much more spectacular. After making it to Bullhead City by about 4, we quickly topped off the cooler and picked up a few things before continuing on. From here, at the border with Nevada, our route would take us east towards the Black Mountains for our final night's camp. Another short pavement section was followed by our turnoff onto dirt roads and into the rugged Black Mountains. We crawled through the incredible terrain for the next few miles. The rain was still coming down pretty good. Eventually, we made it to a steep road at the end of a small canyon near Secret Pass. And that road was steep. A little too steep and rocky. With us by ourselves and conditions less than ideal, it was too late in the trip and too big of a risk to continue on our planned route. Which was definitely a bit unfortunate, but better to play it safe than sorry. We turned around and scouted out a few other trails in the area. Things remained moderate and we even got to use 4 low in a few spots. Eventually we had found a passable road to our campsite for the night. The terrain remained rocky and rugged. We set up camp at a small clearing near an old mine. We parked the jeep literally feet away from the barbed wire fence of this. We checked the weather forecast and decided to wait out a little more rain before fully getting camp set up. Fog rolled through the mountains and eventually the rain let up. We quickly got to work setting up the tent, getting our kitchen ready, and starting on dinner. Tonight we would be enjoying burgers with sautéed veggies. Of course, we had a few drinks as we cooked and got ready to eat. Just after the burgers were finished cooking, the rain decided we needed just a little more. We retreated into the Jeep to eat briefly before it finally stopped for good. We spent the remaining few evening hours sitting and talking about the journey. Tonight was too wet out to get a fire going. It was also quite chilly as the lows dipped into the high 30s. We retreated into the tent for a much awaited night of rest. Luckily, the inside of the tent was nice and warm and dry. We slept like babies and the next day awoke late in the morning. Today was going to be a low key day getting the last few miles of our Arizona Peace Trail route finished up before heading back home to Phoenix. Outside the tent, we were greeted by something we hadn't seen in over 24 hours. The sun. The view wasn't half bad either. Our camp was nestled in the foothills of the Black Mountains, just a few miles outside of the town of Golden Valley. The jagged peaks around us were surrounded by a fast retreating fog. Eventually, after much effort, we made it out of the tent.
For our last breakfast of the trip, we went all out. Scrambled eggs with cheese, peppers, and onions were cooked up alongside bacon. Oatmeal quickly followed. We relaxed for a few more minutes before beginning on the cleanup. After a healthy amount of dishes, we began the process of putting everything back in the Jeep and folding the tent up one last time. After getting things packed up, we headed down from the mine. The trail continued across some flat desert, underneath the power lines, and into a wash. We proceeded down the wash, following along some pretty epic terrain. Things were easy, and the view was breathtaking. We passed through some of the rugged terrain we had seen from our camp as civilization quickly closed in. We turned out of the wash and onto a more established road just a couple of miles from our camp. After passing a trail at kiosk, we soon found ourselves rolling through the residential streets of Golden Valley. Just a few minutes later, we rolled up to a stop sign at the start of the paved road. While we would continue to follow the Peace Trail until we got to Interstate 40 and Route 66, this was the end of the official trail for us. We stopped for a quick minute before following the mix of paved roads and muddy dirt trails back to the highway. After nearly 250 off-road miles and close to 400 miles from the start of our journey in Dateland, the past five days had been absolutely phenomenal. The wide variety of trails we had covered, extensive mix of views along the way, and historic stops at ghost towns, old military camps, and countless other things in between had made for one hell of a journey. While we had done a few miles of pavement, for the most part, we had stuck to dirt trails and camped each night along the way. And my Jeep got us through all of it, albeit a little bit loaded down, but it still made it. Through dusty, rocky, and rutted out trails, rain, mud, tons of sand, along countless washboards, we had completed our epic journey along the Arizona Peace Trail. And everything we did was only around half of the massive and incredible route. Hopefully one day when it isn't covered in snow and we have some more time, we'll be able to complete the rest of the sections we couldn't get to along the Peace Trail. That's going to do it for our 2019 summer trip. Be sure to check out our website for additional photos of our trip and much more info on the trails we followed and the places we visited along the way. Thank you so much for watching our adventure, and as always, we'll see you on the next one. What are you thinking? I'm thinking we're a little bit late. Just a little bit. But it's a lot warmer right now. That it is. And there's that tent. Ish.
Meanwhile, Daniel's dying over here. <laughs> I never made it out of high school. <laughs> yeah, one more time. Make the most out of this one. Three, two, one. <laughs> hey, it's raining. Ooh. It looks like we're hot boxing, but really we're just eating a bunch of donuts. <laughs> Fogged up windows. We had to make it weird. That's like me after a three day camping trip. <laughs> Good. I almost knocked my camera off the table. I want to slide into a ditch or something. <laughs> Turn this off and we'll just let it warm up in here. There you go. Yeah. Uh, the refresh. Oh. 